So primarily, the, primarily these are on the lower portion of the, the, the river here. There are some areas up here which were actually discounted later because of the, their remote distance in terms of connecting water mains and, and locating water treatment plant. So we focused on this lower area here. From that, we developed um, four shortlisted sites, and I appreciate there's only three shown there, but the fourth is actually a combination of um, site one and site three. So site one is uh, a location for both the water treatment plant and the intake uh, around the Highway 19 corridor there. This, the, that's site 1A, and then 1B was actually an intake at site 3 with the water treatment plant being up at site 1. So there are actually four, four overall sites that we uh, shortlisted to have a look at further. So then we went into a much more rigorous uh, um, comparison of those four sites and we used a, a, a methodology called decision criteria and this was based on a really on a sustainable triple bottom line approach which uh, for those of you that, that may not know the triple bottom line looks at environmental factors, social factors and economic factors. Quite often with these sorts of uh, comparisons we will also look at risk and so each of those uh, four main criteria were broken down into sub-criteria that, that were identified as very specific and, and, and important to the Englishman River uh, bulk water supply system. So on the basis of, of these sub-criteria we did a, what we call a pairwise comparison of the, of the four siting options and basically compared one site to another to say whether it was equal in terms of these criteria here or better, or weekly better, or all the way up to much, much better. So they, they were all ranked in a, in a pairwise comparison. And then through, that, through the, the development of that, of that process, we also weighted the main criteria, um, essentially the environmental, social, and risk factors were all weighted approximately equal, with the economic factors, that is the cost, uh, weighted quite a bit quite a bit less than the other three. And the reason for doing that in this sort of comparison is that the economic, the cost of each of these options was approximately equal. So we didn't want to overly weight the, the economic cost when we were looking at the key things which were environmental, social, and then the various risk factors. Preferred site was 1A, and 1A is that site that is, has the water treatment plant located uh, adjacent to the existing City of Hartsville Public Works Yard and the intake location is upstream of uh, Highway 19. The key reasons for that decision, based on the, the decision criteria process that we went through, were uh, that the intake location is located upstream of all major transportation corridors. So that's 19, 19A, um, and also the, the, the rail bridge. So from a water risk, uh, water contamination risk perspective, that certainly has a high, a high ranking. Um, in terms of public, uh, public uh, location, and uh, the, the, the location at Highway 19A, or excuse me, upstream of Highway 19, had a, a low public um, perspective in terms of it, it, it's, it's relatively remote, a re relatively remote location. Um, and it was uh, also, it's also related to the fact that it was quite close to the proposed water treatment, lab, water treatment plant location, which is uh, near the public work, public's work, works yard. The, um, we did a, what we call a sensitivity analysis on this. So if we change the weightings that I mentioned on the social and environmental and the uh, risk factors, if we change the weightings substantially, how would the, the scoring change here? And what we found is that for reasonable changes in, the, in those weightings, um, Site 1A still came out as the preferred uh, location. Uh, this is a, just a view of uh, Highway 19 um, in the vicinity of the Englishman River. Uh, that's the Highway 19 crossing there with the rail, the rail crossing there. 
the uh, intake location is proposed in this general area here and these blue lines if you can see them represent what might be the raw water line running over to the water treatment plant location which is located near the, the public work public's work here, public works yard I'm trouble with it. Um, the raw water main uh, there's a couple of options for the raw water main we could follow the the river bank all the way around underneath the highway corridor here and then come up on the other side to deliver water in here the other option is to look at a directional drilling concept um, from this location through the embankments of the river uh, and the railway and directly into the water treatment plant. Uh, that, that sort of planning or, or future look at that will be part of the next phase of, of, of work in terms of detailed design or preliminary design. Um, as far as the water treatment plant is concerned, I mentioned this is near the pub public works yard. Um, we have got a site there and that site's been secured by the city. Uh, it's a former gravel pit area so it is a it's a used or a, a brownfield site if you will. Um, its location is or its size is certainly more than adequate for any kind of water treatment plant system that would be proposed here um, both in terms of size and, and, and uh, configuration. Um, water treatment uh, will be required on the Englishman River for a few reasons and, and primarily the one is uh, intermittent turbidity which is uh, really a, a cloudiness in the water if you will caused by silt. There are several areas of the Englishman River that the bank systems are unstable and, and they are responsible for the release of turbidity at different times of the year in, into the river. So treatment for removal of that turbidity is required. This particular arrangement is based on um, a conventional water treatment plant approach which is uh, settling and filtration and we also have uh, some provision in there for residuals treatment to reduce the amount of residuals leaving the site. So uh, what will the, looking forward here, what will the water supply program look like? Certainly in the next few years, uh, ongoing work in terms of governance and financial planning is required. Some of the process needs to be ironed out in terms of water treatment. Uh, we would look at the ASR feasibility confirmation by the end of 2013. Design and construction of the water intake uh, and the first stage of water treatment plant and the connecting mains would occur in, in the 2012 to 2016 time frame. ASR would be implemented by 2016 if it is proved to be viable. And then additional water capacity, water distribution capacity would be uh, built after that time as and when water demands would require it. So there would be a second stage of construction if the demands are <coughs> indicated. In terms of estimated costs, um, in terms of the first stage of of the water treatment plant and intake, uh, we have estimated this at, at a conceptual level to be about $37 million. And what would be built at this time is the intake, the raw water mains, and some of the more common uh, interconnecting distribution mains. In addition, it would be that first stage of water treatment plant designed for those, those demands up to let's say up to 2035, but it's, it's a first stage of, of uh, water treatment plant, um, of, of the water treatment plant sizing. That, that, that initial capacity is built and we need more capacity. The increase would be about, or the, the next phase of the work would be about $15 million. So um, the $37 million is the stage one and then subsequent to that we estimate approximately $15 million. Uh, once, if, if and when those water demands increase. Certainly this program should be attractive to uh, senior levels of government for funding. There's a few reasons for that. Given the regional cooperation already that's in place with the AWS and with the, with the aquifer storage and recovery elements, that will be very attractive and obviously coupled with, with the province's requirements to look at water conservation as well. So, uh, looking forward uh, in terms of some details here, in 2011, um, the AWS activities that really need to take place very soon, 
almost right away is, is are, are these components here in order for uh, for, for that uh, system the, the, the initial construction to occur and commissioning to occur by 2016. So these include continue, continuing conceptual level planning, um, discussions with the regulators, exploring that senior government funding I mentioned, um, developing the financial rate structure models, uh, carrying out raw water characterization and, and doing some bench scale testing, piloting, looking at the ASR, and of course communications planning as well. A little further, a little further on, 2012 and 2013, uh, AWS will need to engage a design consultant for the actual uh, detailed design of the, the water treatment plant and intake and, and the interconnecting water mains. Um, finalizing process, finalizing approvals, um, completing the ASR feasibility analysis, and of course uh, borrowing approval as well. And then 2014 to 2016, that's when uh, the majority of those that $37 million would be, would be expended, and that would be um, really for the construction of the intake and the, other, and the water treatment plant. But that would likely occur in 2015, 2016, in terms of the, the major, capital, uh, major capital costs. Construction would occur in this time, commissioning, and then obviously as we go beyond 2016, there would be the, the, um, the ongoing operation and maintenance of the new facilities. 